Welcome to this week's Ask EMBN show. We've got loads of questions in from you guys, such things as selling your e-mountain bike. How do you go about it? When you're out on the trail, should you be using a trailer or carrying baggage to carry all your kit around? And lastly, e-bike frame sets. Do they actually exist? All coming up on this week's show. First question coming in from Zato. Uh, he said, my wife and I want to go on a multi-day ride in France on our Lapier Overvolt. Luggage or, or a cycle trailer, and what are the consequences of both? Love the show, thank you, Zato. Cool, cheers. Interesting, consequences. What are the mm. consequences of consequences. both, Consequences. Eh? Um, so I think if I was doing that, I'd be taking luggage on my bike. I think if you're going to be lugging around a trailer, there's quite a few downsides to quite it. Quite a few consequences. Lots of consequences, especially if you're riding off-road. If you're trying to drag a trailer through little narrow trails, there's rocks and roots on the side of it. It's going to be skipping around, bouncing, rolling over, you name it. I think with the luggage, The actually, voice of experience. Luggage on your bike, you're just going to be able to lug it around. Um, and the trailer was also... Is that where luggage lug comes from, from lugging, lugging around? Lugging, it might be. Do you know, I did not know that. Did you know that, Fran? Then. <laughs> I don't know if, it, if that's true. Lugging it around. <laughs> but I think also you're going to lose a lot of range as well by the extra drag from the uh, uh, trailer as well. So look into it. Just Are um, you going to get more range loss because of dragging a trailer which has got wheels on it or are you mm -hmm. going to get, you're going to lose your range because you're going to throw your heavy rucksack? It's pretty close I think, but I would just, I think maneuverability of the bike and the kit, off-road especially, you know, it's going to be a pain, that trailer bouncing around, rattling around, when you can just carry it all on your bike. Or go the super light way mm -hmm. and uh, just take a backpack with a uh, one of those, what are those towels called, Brandon, which are lightweight towels? They're called... Microfiber. Microfiber, Microfiber. towels. Uh, a set of pants, a set of flip-flops to hang around in the night. A foil blanket to sleep in instead of not a sleeping foil bag. blanket. You take your charger for charging up your mm -hmm. e-bike uh, and basically a credit card. That's all you need to go super lightweight and you can go two, oh. three, four days on the trot. That, just like that. The voice of experience. And this one is from Porky Pie. Uh, hi guys, I'm currently looking to purchase a stand from my Levo Hardtail. Mm. I was thinking of a kickstand, seeing as though the bike comes with pre-drilled mounting holes in the frame. Nice. Uh, or not so nice. But I'm hoping to buy something different as it would spoil the looks with a stand attached. I think it wouldn't spoil the looks. Yeah. I think you can't beat a nice e-bike leaning up against a tree or yeah. a rock or mm. a wall, so maybe I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it. Yeah, I think if you're gonna ride off-road, definitely it's gonna be flapping around as well. So because you can make I've a actually lot of noise. seen Chris riding an e-bike with a side stand, and there is that possibility of the stand just coming down and catching on to a Clipping route. on stuff, yeah. Um, I think if you are going to use it, even learn to prop it up against a wall, or if you are lying it down, make sure you're not lying it on the derailleur. That's quite a common problem. People drop it down drive side and the derailleur ends up Wise ending. words from Chris Smith. Mm. Now this is in from Randy MTB. He's saying, hi guys, your channel is what convinced me to order my first e-bike. I've yet to receive Brilliant. it. Super excited to start riding it. Question is, will the electric bike spoil my love of riding my regular mountain bike because it's easier to get up demand and terrain? I'm a little afraid of this happening. No, listen, Randy, uh, it's just it's just different. Mm. E-biking is just different to mountain bike. And I think it's good actually to do both. It's good yeah. to do mountain biking mm -hmm. or road bike riding. I, I personally think that road bike riding and e-biking is, is probably a better partner. Yeah. But yeah, you keep stuff. on going. Make sure you get that torque through your legs mm. on, on both styles of bike. Yeah, but like it will definitely not take away the fun, it'll, no. it'll just add to it. It's just, think, it's just different, right? Yeah, it opens up uh, your eyes as to what's possible on those bikes. You know, we've done some massive climbs. If you're not sure about how big we've been on our climbs, check this one out. I'm a bit scared, actually. Come on, Chris. Yeah, easy, easy. Look at that. What was all the fuss about? What was all the fuss about? First ridiculously steep climb on an e-bike. There he goes. Go on, Chris! Wow, that's pretty impressive, right? Holy <laughs> Look how steep it is. Oh my God. I, mean, I guess e-bikes are for lazy people, right? Well, riding in the wrong places, clearly. Go on, Chris! That looks hard, doesn't it? Oh. 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 That looks hard. Yeah, Chris, uh, I mean, yeah, very wise words there, but um, the reality is I've actually not seen you on an old-fashioned mountain bike for quite a long time. Oh, I anyhow, that again. anyhow the, this in from 787 Simulations. Uh, hi, guys. I love the channel. Thank Be you very kind. much. kind. I am about to sell my Scott Genius e 920 2019, and I was wondering if you could give me some ideas or a video on the best way to sell an e-mountain bike. 
I use the wheeler dealer here. Uh, I have tried multiple websites, but no one is really interested in the bike. Mm -hmm. Is there a certain website for this? Uh, 787 Simulations, you come to the right place. Uh, will give you 45 quid. <laughs> no, I think you just need to use all the usual suspects, such as eBay, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, you name it. What did you say was the other one? Craigslist. Craigslist? Yeah, so it's a really good way of listing those bikes. Just make sure you're not overpricing it. Just make sure the bike's clean. You've got any service history that goes with it. And it should be pretty easy to sell. It's quite high, high demand for e-bikes at a good price. Well, she's so. on a 19 plate. What would you what would mm. you give uh, 787 for that bike? I don't know. You just need to be looking at the full retail price. And they say, what is it, 50% plus or add 10% compending on uh, mm. condition. So yeah, go sounds, along that those. sounds like this bike's in really good neck. Yeah, and we've done a video all about buying a second hand e-bike. Maybe you can take a few pointers from that. Some of the great things about buying from a dealer is actually the knowledge of that whole bike shop in general. Those guys work on bikes nine to five every single day. So their knowledge about e-bikes is gonna be massive if you've got any questions. Next up is the servicing of the bike. That bike would have been for a strict regime where it's going to be checked for every single thing. So every little fault that could possibly happen with the bike should have been ironed out. And the other great thing is about the history of the bike. People that have their bikes serviced by bike shops are going to get known by the mechanics as well. So they're going to know the previous owner. Pat McDonald, will any airline allow you to fly with your e-bike battery in your carry-on luggage? I know you cannot have it in your bike, but what about in your carry-on? Looking at buying an e-bike, but also want to travel, so this might influence my choice if I need to rent a battery when I get to my I know destination. It's coming. I know it's coming. God I know it's coming. We're going to hear about Bruce Willis, and we're going to hear about Simon Cowell. Go on, uh, yeah. take it away. Yeah, funny story. Um, we heard from one of uh, we did a video for M1, and some of their clients have uh, some of their clients are such big names as Bruce Willis, Simon Cowell. Um, those guys turn up to buy a bike, and they're actually. Uh, talking about taking their bikes back on the plane and they're saying, oh, you're not allowed to fly with an e-bike, but they just simply put their e-bike on the plane and fly it home. This gentleman wants some practical advice, Chris. Is he not do, do you want any, Do you want any garden fence fairy tales? <laughs> so you cannot take uh, a battery on a plane yeah. on your bike. Yeah. However, you can actually fly batteries on airplanes, but you need to have the correct box, which is a EU, a EU standard box, uh, with the right, correct pack-in. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's very, very complicated. There's yeah. lots of red tape surrounding it, but um, I think we did fly our battery TNT once. Uh, yeah. You can't insure it, but there are ways around getting mm. your batteries overseas, that's for sure. Yeah, and I think it's coming more commonplace as well, especially in Europe, there's people renting out batteries. So you just fly with your bike, rent a battery when you're over there. Easy. Scotty Hansen. Mm -hmm. Scotty Hansen, along the lines of chains, I'm about to take ownership on an electric bike with an 11-speed gearing. As my current Surly Krampus has an 11-speed cassette, I went ahead and purchased a couple of KMC E11 chains to use on both bikes. Does using an e-bike chain on a non-electric bike pose a threat to its well-being? Mm -hmm. That's pretty dramatic there, uh, Scotty. Yeah, so an e-bike rated chain is going to be no different in uh, width or usability on any standard mountain bikes. It's just going to give you a little bit more security, so it's going to be a bit stiffer on the side plates. The actual pins are going to be uprated as well, so it's probably a good move. It might be slightly heavier, but you're definitely not going to be suffering any snap chains on your standard mountain bike. And Carl Hicks, nice to hear back from you, Carl. I haven't heard from you for a while, actually. Yeah, he's saying, hi, could you possibly give me some advice? Yesterday at the Cycle Show, I tested out an e-bike, loads of fun, slightly torn between uh, which bike to buy. He's got a custom-built giant rain. Everything is top spec. Is it possible to purchase an e-bike frame kit only? So frame, motor, battery, etc., just to put my components on it. Yeah, well, we did see about the Foes, American mm. brand Foes, we're coming out with an, an e-bike kit not so long ago. Yeah. Obviously, the new Levo is available. I think it's only available in Germany as, yeah. as the S-Works frame kit. Yeah, though. and that's six thousand pounds or six thousand euros as well. In the market? Yeah, you've got a few Chinese ones like on Amazon and eBay. You can get these uh, full suspension e-bike kits, but they tend to be a bit old school in the geometry as well. It do get the job done, but it's totally relatable to sort of what you interpret as mountain biking. So you might maybe suffer Carl, a maybe. Little you bit. could go and do a deal with the man who is selling the Scott Genius, right? Maybe, yeah. Maybe, I mean, maybe, we, should, maybe we should set up some kind of forum here to sell, buy and sell bikes. Yeah, you could get a second hand one maybe and put your newer components on it. Could be a good way. So, oh. yeah. But that's it for this week's show. Don't forget, if you guys got any questions you want to ask us, hashtag AskEMBN down in the comments box below. 
If you want to stick around on EMB, we've got loads of cool content on here. Check out EMBN versus a chairlift down here on the new commensal bikes. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to click the globe to subscribe to EMBN and we shall see you next week.